as we tell you to go and fix your gut, to avoid friends, to change environments, to eat healthy, to go to the gym so that you can fight your anxiety, your depression, your drug addiction and all this, we have to take responsibility that some of us, we are just lying to you to make you feel better. We are lying to you to make you feel better. And that's why I believe healthcare professionals, be it doctors, pharmacists, nutritionists, all of them, they should have an identity. They should know God before knowing medicine. or ah, Even after they've known medicine, they should actually seek the truth so that the rest can be added unto them. But until that happens, health will always be an industry. You will become a drug addict. And guess what we will do? We will take you into a rehab center. In that rehab center, where do you think, what, what do you think happens in a rehab center? Somebody who has been an addict of narcotics, we're actually going to give you the same same narcotics only under low doses. Methadone is still a narcotic. Only with low potency. So we'll give you one that will help you win off these addictions from that drug. But guess what? How many people do you know have gone into a rehab, come, came out of that rehab, and then became worse? They became very violent. They became very angry about themselves. They actually resented those people who took them to the rehab centers. And now they resent these people and they become as evil as them, as those who actually took them to the rehab centers. Because by the time you're thinking of taking your son to a rehab center, you must be very evil. You did not even take time to teach this son about... <laughs> hey, hey, hey. About identity. Even forgiveness. You did not take time to do that. So now you're pushing this son into a group of other people who don't even have identities. Now he is going there to pick another identity. He comes out with a different identity and an identity of more drunkards. And you expect him to walk out of that addiction. You will see them moving from one addiction to another. They will move from that drug addiction, now they will be sex addicts. They will move from sex addiction, sex addiction, now they will be seeking validation from people. They will be telling their stories everywhere so that people can get to accept them. Oh, oh, he was a drug addict. Look at him now. He can do better. Oh, we got you. Ah, we clap for you. As we clap for you, we are making you feel validated from us. We are actually putting our identities in you. And then you become so weak. And then when you come out of that conversation with us, we've clapped for you, felt so good about yourself. You sit in a house in a corner on your own. And then now your thoughts start coming in. Those evil thoughts are coming in. And then Satan uses that against you, turns you against your God and tells you, oh, you know what? Ah, don't worry. You gave that speech. It was so awesome. But no, what? for you to make it even better, go and smoke another blunt. Get more addiction. And then when you come out of it, People will also clap for you because you fought it twice. Imagine you're so strong. You can fight addiction twice. If you actually won the other battle, you can win this one. So don't worry. Just take two plants. You know, you have control, right? Just one. Just one. Imagine one. If you want this, this week you've not even masturbated. Imagine. Ah, you're doing good. Please, just masturbate today. Only once. You've not had sex in a while. I mean, I how? Have you not seen that research that says you must ejaculate 21 days in a week, in, in a month? Have you not seen it? That the more, the more you ejaculate, the more you save yourself from prostate cancer? Have you not seen that? That is science. Science has proved it. Please, masturbate. And then you're there. Back to square zero. And then now after it, after you've gotten back, you start feeling guilty about it. So yes, you masturbated. No sin. But the guilt that came with you masturbating. Now it's holding you accountable. Oh, oh, hey. So don't allow the devil to live in you. Do not build that home for that devil. Go and take that devil out by forgiving your mother. You will get your identity. And then go back to the father. Forgive the father for allowing the mother to turn you against uh, your biological father. Okay? And it doesn't matter if your father is a drunkard or whatever. It doesn't matter. Go and forgive him. Because when you forgive him, you will not pick up his traits. No. It's just you accepting God to be in you because God is in us, but we have to accept him to live in us. So it's you accepting that I am weak and I cannot do without the, the power of the creator. Once you accept that, God sees your suffering and guess what he does? He takes off that suffering of you. He slides off those addictions. He takes off that appetite for food. He takes out that appetite for sex. He takes out that nonsense that you always think that I am attracted to other women or other men or I'm a bisexual. He takes that all of you and then puts into you an identity and then through that identity, 
He reveals things to you and you will start to realize these things that he's revealing to me are actually things that I know. And then when you move along with that identity, you'll be looking at your journey and you'll be smiling. How was I so addicted to this? How was I so much into pot? How did I end up using 20,000 every month to just buy weed? How did I have six contacts of people who supply weed to me? How? How was that gentleman my friend? Now you'll be laughing at your life. You'll, be, you'll actually drive pleasure in your life because you'll have perfect peace and there'll be no addictions. But until that happens, oh, you will fast. <laughs> you will fast. You will eat fatty meat. You will use ghee to cook. But after using ghee to cook, you might even consider using the same ghee to masturbate. Every time refer to the story of Adam, that anytime you love something, you turn yourself away from God because... You, are, you exist only to love God. Seek the truth, love God with all your might, all might without anything alongside it. Once you do that, you will have perfect peace. He will use you to actually love other people. And until that happens, ah, we will struggle. We will be relying on intellect. And you see, intellect is evil because it's what people put in you. You are born with common sense. And common sense is what you need. Somebody's asking me, Doctor, is the story not wanga happy? <laughs> now we know how men behave. <laughs> yeah? Hey. <laughs> this story was not wanga happy. Let me tell you, the easiest part is I've lived this life. I am not I'm never shy of talking about my life because it was it was amazing. When I was living it, it was the best life at that moment in time. <clears throat> hmm? it, I was living the best life at that moment in time. I would come from KNH, pass through town, take my Jack Daniels plus my four liters of Coca-Cola, straight to the car. <laughs> hmm? Straight to the car. The good thing is I never loved clubbing, but I would, I would take my alcohol in the house. I drink my alcohol and I feel good about it. Like, I have worked so tirelessly this week. I've stolen all those vials to just sell. To just get money so that I can actually satisfy my ego. That now I can buy alcohol worth 5,000 shillings and put it on a table and invite ladies there. And now we can have these parties. And, and little do we know that we're just using ladies. We're actually destroying people's wives. We're actually causing people more pain. So we're actually creating sluts without even knowing. So that's the life that all of you enjoy doing. You enjoy making sluts. Men enjoy making women sluts. And then they will call these women sluts. So look, you see how the devil works? I make you a slut and then I call you a slut. And then you feel bad about yourself. You start judging. Oh, just because you had sex with me, you're calling me a slut. Yeah. <laughs> you allowed it, right? Because women are the ones who give access to sex. Every consequence that comes with that, women give access to sex. And who to give children to. So you will choose. This one I'm having sex with. This one I'm having children with. You, you have the ability to do. But you will not... Be aware of this if you don't have an identity. So you can never blame a man for entering you, for turning you into a slut. You have made sex so available, and that's why it's becoming so addictive. Ladies have made, in campus, ladies have made sex so, so available and so cheap that men don't stress anymore. That we can talk about sex openly now, and we can get it the next minute. Nowadays, sex toys are delivered at your doorstep. You don't need to go for them because they know you are afraid. They will deliver it at your doorstep. And now, 70% of women are having these sex toys. Because men have become so weak, they have no identities, they are one-minute men, so therefore a woman has to have sex with a man and then use a toy again. And now you start resenting this man because you're thinking, ah, this one does not portray any masculine energy. This one is a drug addict. Now you're all blaming on alcohol, blaming on whatever. And some of you want your man to smoke weed so that he can have sex with you because you think or you believe that when he's on weed, he is the best man. Ah, this one can actually blow your mind all night. He will throw you to the reef and cut your leg. He will break your, your waist and tomorrow you're going for an x-ray. Hip joint. <laughs> Eh? But when he's sober, zero tolerance. Zero. He can't. he can't. He can't even breathe. All he does is just snow besides you. And you hate it. And the more you hate it, you become it. Next time, all of you are snoring. Now it's a choir. <laughs> yeah.